Alrighty, so Blizzard just a couple of hours ago announced the new ladder map pool for the next season in StarCraft 2. So 2020 ladder season 2 brings new 1v1 and team maps to ladder. Now I haven't had a look at the maps just yet. I just looked at the bottom section of this post at what the actual map pool for season 2 will be. You know what's funny? Generally speaking, the most disliked maps in the current map pool are Purity and Industry and Golden Wool. For some reason, especially Purity and Industry, like the GSL, they're not even playing this tournament anymore. For some reason, they are sticking around for another season. I don't mind Golden Wool as much as I, I dislike Purity and Industry. I mean, both of the maps are pretty good, but we'll get into it in a little bit. Regardless, we'll get started like we always do at the very top of this post and... I guess with the very first map. So these maps will be available for playtesting or exploration in the custom games section of multiplayer today. Below are some descriptions from the creators of the maps. Please click on the images to see the detailed views. All right, so here's the first one. Death Aura LE. Death Aura LE. Now, please keep in mind, I have not played any games on any of these maps. I'm just going to be giving you my initial impressions. Uh, this one is made by Maras. I actually met Maros at um, Home Story Cup 20. She also produced Everdream. So she has produced Everdream Alley, as you can see, created by Maros. And she's actually made quite a few maps. So Death Aura features the new acceleration zone generators. Aha! That increases the movement speed of units. This is a thing that recently has started happening in the Team Liquid map contest, where basically... You know, like, the inhibitor zone generators, the ones that, like, are slowing bubbles? This is, like, the reverse of that, you know? Like, you know how, like, in Mario Kart, you can drive over, like, those little, like, carrot-looking, like, things, right? Um, this is that, basically. So your units get sped up. That increases the movement speed of units. These zones are situated on the three bridges in the middle. The most forward bases have two rich Vespian geysers. 14 blue bases in total of which the forward ones have two rich Vespian Geisters. The acceleration zone generators are situated on the bridge in... What? Didn't I literally... <laughs> what? Didn't I literally read this twice? The scouting path goes through these in a zigzag shape. There's also plenty of airspace. Okay, well, you know what? Let's just have a look. So here it is. Death Aura. She does make uh, she does make some really pretty maps. I think that actually Everdream has to be one of the nicest looking maps in the current map pool. It's not as dark as many of the others are. Um. Okay. So two player map. Nation confirmed. Question: Do map makers have high MMR? You can actually look up um, more about the map makers on their Liquipedia pages. Some of them have pretty detailed ones. I don't really know exactly how good Maras is. Um. There you go. Does it say she often names maps after metal songs? She's from Finland. Okay, it all adds up. Wait, her birthday is October 29th? Donation that's, that's my birthday. Kapow, kapow, kapow. Thank you, Astro. Thank you, Solar Fluxion. Anyways, um, so she has made Death Aura, Disco Bloodbath, Everdream, Nightshade, and Winter's Gate. Oh, she also made Nightshade? I didn't even realize that. Yeah, so basically the good maps that have recently been made. I didn't really like Winter's Gate, but like a whole bunch of good maps recently uh, were made by her, which is pretty cool. Okay, so. Two-player map. Main base, natural third, fourth, I assume. Then it opens up. She seems to make mostly like standard, straightforward macro maps. They are um, my personal favorites. I think they're pretty straightforward usually. And... Um, Straightforward doesn't mean boring. Like, a lot of people think, like, straightforward maps are boring. StarCraft is hard enough as it is. It doesn't need too much fanciness for my liking. Just uh, stock standard macro maps are my personal favorites. Now, the ones over here in the center, they do have two rich Vespian geysers each. So, this base over here basically mines as if it's got four gases. That's going to give you a ridiculous amount of gas income. So, I wouldn't be surprised if those are going to be super critical in the late game. Now, I just want to have a quick look here in the actual game um, to see how fast those center things are. So, wait, what, what is it called? Death Aura, right? Oh, it's one word. Death Aura. Death Aura LE. Alrighty. <laughs> Loco Bly is going to have a field day with those double rich Vespian geysers. Yeah. 
Some players are really gonna love him. There's some dead trees over here. So Death Aura, is that a, a, a reference to anything? I mean, apparently she names her maps after metal songs. Is Death Aura like... Sounds like a, a metal band for sure. Ooh. I like the fact that there's like a... A mothership shield kind of thing behind my hatchery. Anyways, so this is the natural. This is, I guess, the third base or the fourth. And then this is the other one, I guess. This looks like a nice map. Not too dark. I just want to see what these... Uh, Speed zones here. These Mario Kart zones here in the center feel like. Alright, here we go. You ready? So apparently these speed up your units. Okay, that was kind of anticlimactic. New subscriber <laughs> detected. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, they speed up your units. Alright. Don't know if that necessarily really added a whole lot. Feel like this would have been a fine map without it, but hey, it's it's there. Pretty cool. It's like stim pack for your units, yeah. But obviously if your units, uh, I think it's a, a, is it a fixed amount? Oh, I actually don't know. How does that work on the inhibitor zone ones? Is that a fixed amount? Or does it just double the speed of the unit that's inside of it? Yeah, zerklings are gonna be really, really fast. Now I'm too lazy to like make a bunch of zerklings and get zerkling speed, but. Um. Yeah, it should only touch ground units, by the way. I don't think, like, flying units are gonna be, uh, are gonna be that great. Although, technically speaking, a Queen March... It's gonna be pretty good. A Queen March through those, like, speed bubbles... It's gonna be pretty good. Do you think if I build a structure on it, it's gonna build faster, too? That would be something. Oh my god. What's going on? 71. Nah, looks like a standard one to me, guys. <laughs> Imagine things build faster over there. Wait, what? Does it? No, it doesn't. I thought for a second it did. It just makes it look faster, okay? I don't know why it's, it's green above this. Maybe that's a bug. Maybe it's supposed to, like, I don't know, signify badassery. Anyway, so you can build on top of these things. I guess that's something. Yeah, but all things considered, this looks like a pretty good map. I wouldn't be surprised if the game goes the distance. These rich Vespian geysers are gonna be uh, all the rage. Because uh, pretty much all the late game unit compositions in StarCraft 2 need a lot of gas. This map is certainly loco approved. I'm a fan. This looks great. Alright, map number two. The Music 246. So Maros apparently was repeated twice here with some of these words. He's got one line. Choose between an open third and a saver fourth, or a saver third and an open fourth. I don't know the music 246. Not sure. Ooh. The ice uh, tile set. Okay. So, two player map, of course, once again. Bottom left hand corner. And then the top right hand corner is where you can, uh, where you can spawn. Um. Okay, yeah, I see what he means. So this looks like the, the map that's, or rather, this looks like the base that's going to be easier to defend. There's some rocks right over here to create a choke point and to certainly make the, uh, the defense a little bit easier. And then I guess for this base over here, there's multiple entrances, but it's really not even that many, though. I guess it's, it's really not that much safer. Yeah, no, it's, it's really not that much. Like, units can still come from this side as well, right? If you take the one right over here. So, if you take this as your third base, units can come from this side and from here. Or they can go to your natural. I think most people will probably opt to take the vertical expansion as their third. But, I mean, this one's pretty straightforward as well. Although, I guess the nice advantage is if you take this as your third, you can also take that as your fourth. You just destroy these rocks and then you can easily get over there. There's some watchtowers as well, and then a little bit of a weird nuke over here. This is like a bit of weird space that we don't usually see in StarCraft. Also looks like a solid map though, at least in my initial impressions here. I do want to quickly load it up as well, because sometimes these maps look really cool in the pictures, and then when you're actually on them, they're super dark, or you can't really like read it very well. There have been issues with that in the past. Don't think it's really happening anymore, but there were like a bunch of maps in the map pool. That looked really beautiful, but I couldn't differentiate my own units. Which is not ideal. 
Uh, ice and chrome. No purity in industry, though. Ice and chrome. But the music, 246. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, I gotta say, these first two right here, they look really nice. Right? Any complaints? What do you guys think? Now, obviously, there might be some killer siege tank positionings or some insane, like, blink positionings that you can get to. Uh, the only way we figure those out is by having the maps in the map pool for a little while. Players will find abusable locations very fast, so sometimes it needs a bit of a, a patch up. But this looks nice, right? Yeah, these look, uh, these look really, really good. Yeah, so this map also looks a little bit darker than uh, this image would, would, you know, make you think. But I mean, not too dark at all. I actually kind of think that all maps in StarCraft are a bit too dark. It doesn't always need to be this dark. I don't know why they uh, they oftentimes are. So these watchtowers, by the way, um, I don't know exactly what kind of function they will serve. Because it seems like dropships can still go around it. And they're not going to be, like, spotting the center path, right? Will they? No. Let you go. I got more food, guys. Nice. Yeah, this map does look huge. Oh my god, if you look at the size of how much you can actually see here, <laughs> this map looks absolutely enormous. So maps actually have been getting smaller in Legacy of the Void over like the last two years or so. Um, yeah, this map looks pretty gigantic. So wait, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so 16 bases here in total. It is a really, really big map, yeah. You're gonna be able to hide proxies here, basically everywhere. So there's gonna be an Overlord location over here as well, so you can kinda spot what's going on. Overlord location over here too. Rush distance between the bases though can't be all too long, because then you can't scout anything with Overlords. But I'm assuming that these maps have all been tested for exactly those kinds of things. Maybe you need to put your OV over here. Like maybe you have to fly in from this direction and then go back to this pillar instead. I'm not sure, but I guess I guess that will be tested over the next couple of weeks as this map uh, will actually be on the ladder. Initial impressions though of this one looks very, very good. I didn't actually pay attention for like overload positions on this map, the one that we saw earlier. Is it this little pillar? Yo, I feel like a lot of map makers really don't like Zerk very much. <laughs> so this was, what was it? Death, death, uh, aura, death aura. If there's no pillar, where do you put your overlord? That would be really quite tricky. Loco, there are none except for the third base location? Really? So one thing that um, that is the case with the current map pool is that like it indirectly nerfed Donation Zerg quite a bit. Accepted. If you could play only one game for the rest of your life, would it be SC2? Uh, probably, yeah. Yeah, this game is great. Ooh, thanks for the two euro, by the way. Yeah, so there is no pillar to put your overlord on. There's a, there's a little pillar over here, but that feels really thanks far for away. All the great content. Cheers from Arizona. Hey, thank you, Wup, or Top Wup. <laughs> thank you for the four months. So, I don't think... Hmm, we're gonna have to playtest this if we want to get into the details. It feels like if I put an Overlord over here, a Marine can gun it from there or from over there. I don't know if there's gonna be a safe space. There might just barely be one. Hmm. I'm not sure. This map does seem a little bit tricky when it comes to Overlord safe locations, which is actually really important. Because Zerk scouts with both OVs at the front in Zerk vs. Terran and then also in Zerk vs. Protals. Yeah, it feels like this can be attacked by Marines for sure, right? Like a Marine can attack, either attack from here or over there. Like I'm pretty sure both locations are going to be attackable. Maybe over here, but like over here is not a good spot because then you can't see anything. Um, plus you can't fly there. So I guess this is going to be your safe spot. Right over here. There's also a little safe spot over here, and then I guess also something over there. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that is certainly something to keep in mind here. If there was like a little safe point over here where you can hang your overlord, that would be pretty nice. But, um... 
Yeah, hard to comment on when it comes to balance on maps that I've never seen anyone play on. <laughs> Alright, so general consensus on these, pretty good. Not entirely sure though about the Overlord positioning, but maybe that's a little bit of Zerg bias coming into the mix as well. I'm sure Terran and Protoss players are like, yeah, screw Zerg! Right? That's, that's what you guys think, right? Alright, anyways. Um, <laughs> Loco, now Zerg actually has to work for the wins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. Pillars of gold. Pillars of gold. Oof. Agaton. So I guess it's the map maker. Terran prospectors have reported that they've seen structures in the distance that sort up the sky like pillars of gold. Ooh, Agaton made a backstory. I like it. The proto settlement consists of 14 bases, where the linear base is further away from the opponent compared to the triangular third, but in return, the high ground surrounding it must be taken into consideration. No matter in which direction you go, there will be a fourth waiting for you. The corner bases will prove valuable as vantage points that help control the base located below it. Ooh. Alright. Pillars of gold. Oh my god. Where are the pillars? The whole problem with this stuff is that there's no pillars. Where's the pillars? Okay, maybe there are. Um, are these the pillars? I guess these are the pillars, yeah. Um, Where's the gold? <laughs> there's no pillars and no gold. I was promised both of those things. No, I guess there are pillars and a little bit of gold too. Um, Main? Main? Yes. Main, natural... And then, I guess you can take a third over in that direction, but that is going to be a lot of angles to defend. I can imagine most people will probably try to expand in this direction instead. It says that there's a longer distance from this, this location right over here towards this, but I feel like this is way easier to defend. Right? Didn't, didn't it say that? Um, linear base is further away from the opponent compared to the triangular base. So this one is closer by? Doubt? Maybe a little bit. Wait, wait. To the opponent? Oh, the linear base is further away from the opponent. Right, okay, okay, sorry, I was gonna say. I read half the sentence and then drew my conclusion, guys. <laughs> this is a loco specialty. Okay, 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 fair. Um. <laughs> yeah, this also looks pretty standard though. I can't imagine not a lot of Terrans and Protosses are gonna enjoy this map very much because you can't take a third base very safely here. This choke point is huge, this choke point is huge, right? Like, say you take it over here, then you have to defend like three choke points plus rocks. So I can imagine pretty much all the Protoss and Terrans players wanna, wanna expand, you know, horizontally. This seems like a map that would be a two base all-in kind of game or maybe like proxy all-in all the time. This could turn out to be a map that's only Zerk for Zerk, because I don't see how Terran and Protosses can defend the third base very easily. This looks like an amazing Zerk map, yeah. But then whenever there's an amazing Zerk map, it immediately turns into a map where Terran and Protoss players just don't play. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Pillars of Gold. Yeah. Now I'm excited for Submarine Alley, man. This kind of gives me already with this little image right over here. It gives me some, uh... What's the map called? The, the underwater one. Oh no, I forget the name of it now. Uh... Oh come on, we played that map for like two years. Abyssal Reef, yeah. It seems to look a little bit like Abyssal Reef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That map was awesome. Probably the best map we've had in StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Okay, so this is a natural, right? Main base seems fine as well. Maybe a little bit small. Now, I know what you're thinking. Look, it's not the size of the main base that matters, but what you do with it. Right, but... Hmm. Wall over here looks pretty good. Maybe it's not that far away. Hey, by the way, this map does look a little bit brighter. So I do have to... Uh, I have to compliment that, right? Like, I was just complaining how maps are getting pretty dark. This is uh, This is quite nice. And there are pillars to put your overlord on. Pillars of gold. Oh my god. Pillars. Yeah, apparently those are becoming a rare sight. 
Kind of like Zelnaga Watchtowers in 2020 there. Surprisingly uncommon. Yeah, maybe uh, the gold that they're referring to is Overlords. Because I would agree with that. The Pillars of Overlords. It's beautiful. This map looks huge. Ah, it doesn't look that big. But there's quite a bit of space between bases. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the other one, uh, the other one like the Chrome and Ice one, that one had 18 bases. This one, um, this one has a little bit less than that. This looks like an amazing Zerk map. Like this map looks 100% Zerk. Um, yeah, that's also immediately my main critique. It's not going to be terrible for Terran and Protoss or whatever, but it'll be kind of tricky to play. Uh, I didn't, by the way, really check on these other two maps, the locations. Yeah, so this map right over here, that is quite important to, uh, to, to mention. There's a ramp leading down, small ramp, so like a tight choke, uh, from the main to the natural. Same right here for uh, these ones as well. So small ramp right here leading down from the main to the natural. However, while this one is going to have an easier natural expansion to defend, these other two are going to be flat. So once you get to the low ground over here, this is like a flat expansion from here, right? And the same, the same from here. So it's not like, say you wanted to cheese or like push aggressively on two bases. Um, your opponent, you know, is going to be much more vulnerable because they don't have high ground advantage. Um, so that's quite significant. So I don't really see anyone trying to do any damage to anyone right here on two bases. But on the flip side, I also don't really see players that take, you know, this map taking a third base very easily when they play Terran and Protoss. So a little bit shaky. A little bit shaky on this one. And for these ones, I'm not sure about the pillars, right? Like the pillars seem a little bit, uh, a little bit of a risk. Hmm. Okay. Um, and then the last one, Submarine LE. I mean, there's also team maps, but we can have a quick little peek, I guess, but I don't really care. Uh, Submarine LE. Swag. <laughs> Does this guy have swag? Swag. <laughs> rather small and aggressive map with fewer bases. Although small, the layout is still rather standard, so it allows for all kinds of strategies. That's what she said. Uh... The short, straightforward attack path is choked off by rocks. Is that what, uh... Okay. Ooh, what's going on here? Um... <laughs> sorry, guys. That last one was a bit of a stretch. I'm, I'm sorry. Um... Main? Natural? Man, this looks like, uh... This looks like coral right now, right? Like, uh, this looks like one of those, like, lively coral places that we haven't destroyed yet. Main, natural, third, fourth. So wait, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is also 12 bases in total, which is definitely on the smaller end of things. So he says rather small and aggressive, but that's okay. Um, submarine. Submarine alley. Let us go ahead and have a look. Yeah, it looks nice. I mean, the layout of these maps, <clears throat> excuse me, like, they look very standard. There's not really anything crazy over here. Nothing, like, absolutely out of the ordinary. Um, I don't think anyone can really complain about it. Ooh, we got a beautiful little pink background over here. Don't see that usually on these loading screens. And this map is also nice and bright. Yay! Yay for bright maps. Now, the real question is, are units going to be floating to the surface like they did on Abyssal Reef? Nope. <laughs> Sorry, drone. You did nothing wrong. I, uh... Nope. Nope. No no floating. No floating like they did on Abyssal Reef. Um... <clears throat> what does it say? Caution? So I think this is a little Reaper jump up pad right over there. There's also a little jump up location over here. There are locations to hide overlords. Um... Yeah, so this map looks really nice. I really like the look of this map. Right? Like, I don't think there's really anything... It looks like it's low-quality graphics for some reason. I don't know. Is that just me? For some reason, maybe that's because it's so light. Maybe I'm just not used to seeing the light stuff, but... It looks like my graphics are set to low. Although... Oh, I'm not on extreme for some reason. Maybe we can have a quick look. Is there a difference? 
It looks, yeah, it looks a little bit weird, right? Okay, it, it does look a little bit better now, I think, but... Hmm. So it's called Submarine, but we're not actually underground. Or underwater. I think it might just be a little bit too small. I actually don't mind it. I kind of like the fact that it's getting, uh, like, the maps are getting a little bit smaller. Have you seen the GSL today? Uh, I did not YHS. No, I heard it was very good, though. Parting TY, right? I did, uh, I did hear the result of it, but New let's not, let's not get into it. Hey, thanks for the resub. 35 months. And Jupiter gifting two community subs. Appreciate that, man. He gave one to Todus Galipter and Shy Guy. Amazing. Yeah, I might want to watch like the uh, the VOD of the uh, the GSL Codes. Uh, so standard choke off right over here, standard wall. Relatively small main base, I suppose, but should be sufficient. Um, so it depends on where you take the fourth. This base seems very easy to defend. This base a little bit harder. Can we um, rewind? So this base looks a little bit um, a little bit harder to defend. But nothing too crazy. Like it's not like you can put siege tanks over here and they can hit the base. Yeah, this looks this looks honestly like a great map. I can't really find any any flaws other than the fact that units don't flow to the surface, but <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I really can't I can't really find very much. I mean, there's no uh Zelnaga watchtowers or anything either. Zelnaga Watchtowers, generally speaking, a Zerk favor. Um, because, I mean, there's no reason for Zerk not to have the Watchtowers. But, I mean, they have been uh, pretty uncommon over the last couple of years. Now, this map looks really nice. I, I can't complain. So, here's the thing, though. This is what I mentioned at the beginning, right? So, this is what the actual map pool looks like. In the GSL Code S, so the tournament that YHS just brought up, they no longer play Purity and in Industry. Instead, they've replaced it with another map. Like a, a four-player map. I, like, it, it's a pretty clear sign that Purity and in Industry, and for those of you that are unfamiliar with the map by just the name, it's this one over here with, like, you know, the big slowing bubbles in between the main bases and, like, the weird fourth and third base layout. Um, yeah, they're, they're playing on Obsidian instead. It's, it's not a good map. Like, it's not a good map because... It's very, very turtle favorite. Like, you can very, very easily turtle on this map and your opponent can't really push you. You like it a lot? It's one of the best maps? Well, the only people that really think this map is amazing are the turtle players. <laughs> so I can pick you all out in Twitch chat very quick. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but, um, yeah, this map, it's, it's, it's pretty good to watch games on. So it's one of those, okay? Like... Purity in, uh, Purity in Industry and Golden Wall LE, for me, have one thing in common. I love watching games on them. Really despise playing games on them right now. Maybe that's, maybe that's just me. It's also due to the fact that they are very, like, quote-unquote, like, different. Um, compared to, like, well, all of the other maps that we looked at so far. Like, all of these are kind of comparable. And Purity in Industry are a little bit eh. So the ones that will go, Everdream will stay, so that's cool. I love Everdream, good map. Eternal Empire will go, Nightshade will finally go as well. I mean, this map has been around for a while, very good map though. Uh, but um, <clears throat> I mean, we've seen this one for a long time. It's nice to get some uh, some fresh, uh, some fresh new maps. Simulacrum will also be gone. I don't mind that. I don't really like Simulacrum that much anymore. I'm finally starting to enjoy Zen after a couple of seasons. Ever since they changed the map recently with, like, the new ladder season a couple months back. Um, they've made it quite a bit better with the minor changes that they made to it. Um, but, I mean, it's good riddance for most of these, right? Like, Nightshade, uh, Simulacrum, and Zen. I mean, I think we can all agree that they can, you know, they can go. <laughs> they, have, they have had their lifespan, right? It's, it's, it's good to have some new, some new fresh maps. It's just quite surprising that they decided to keep Golden Wall and then Purity and Industry out of all maps. Look what they should have kept Eternal Empire. Yeah, Eternal Empire is good. I do like Eternal Empire. I think I think they could have kept Eternal Empire and then gotten rid of Purity and Industry. Or like kept Eternal Empire and then gotten rid of Golden Wall. 
Like, uh, you know, replace pure or, or replace Eternal Empire with one of those two. I think that would be better. Other than that, though, it looks pretty good. Now, as far as the team maps go, now I don't play team games very often. I mean, the only times I play team maps is when I'm memeing <laughs> or just hanging out. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. This looks like a, a Tron map or something like that. Um, this is a 2v2 map, by the way. So it's called Nightscape LE. I don't know what's going on here. Straight to the disco. These don't even look like golden minerals. These look like red minerals. <laughs> Fair. This map looks pretty, but I mean, these are 3v3 and then also the 4v4 map, right? Like this is just your classic 4v4 map. Where you have like uh, the cornucopia right here in the center, you know? Like you all get to uh, mine from the horn of plenty here. The red minerals, you get minus five minerals for each return trip. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can only you can only play Nightscape while listening to Daft Punk. I, I agree, yeah. Uh, that's a good idea. Um, no, so I don't really care too much about these maps, but I mean, um, they look pretty fun. They look pretty fun. So, along with the new map pool, the new season also brings everyone a free name change. Simply follow the steps below to change your character name. Right. I changed my character name once uh, once a season, it seems. At least, well, I'm playing, this is the main account, right? Like, this is the loco account, but my other two accounts I do change the names on. Just for the fun. Uh, just for the fun of it. We have to start uh, coming up with some good names again. If you guys have any recommendations, let me know. But, uh, looking forward to it. I do think after playing on these maps pretty much every day for, I don't know, the last three months or so, it's good to have a little bit more change. Uh, uh, or like a, a little bit more variety again. And uh, these maps look really nice, yeah. When does the new season start? It should tell us in-game. Uh, current season. So the new season will start, I think, like June 3rd or June 4th or whatever. Something like that. I wish they kept Eternal Empire. Right, yeah. I think, yeah, I agree. I think they should get rid of Purity and Industry and keep Eternal Empire. Or get rid of Golden Wool and keep Eternal Empire. That would be good. 